What is up guys, we are back with another league called problem today. We're doing 1610 maximum number of visible points. You are given an array points and integer angle and your location with location in position X, position Y, all the points also have an XY coordinate. They both denote, denote integral coordinates on the XY plane. You're initially facing east. You can't move from your position, but you can start rotating. In other words, position X, position Y cannot be changed. Your field of view in degrees is represented by angle, determining how wide you can see from any given view direction. Let D be the amount of degrees that you rotate counterclockwise, and your field of view is inclusive rate, and D minus angle divided by 2, blah, blah. Anyways, uh, the, the question is very simple. I don't want to read it, but basically this is how it's going to work. You're originally, you're starting over here. You're facing east. You're facing east, and well, you're giving an angle, and your angle is basically your point of view, your field of view that you can see. You give it an angle. This is your starting position, x, y. Over here is your angle. Okay, and then you're also given, that's your angle, yes, 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 and you can also rotate, you can rotate counterclockwise, you can do the full, do 60 circle, right, you can do the full circle, okay, okay, yes, we know, yep, I don't know what the angle divided by two crap is, ow, that hurt, where's the points, okay, anyways, then you also have points in this entire XY plane, you also have points in this entire plane, and you can see only a certain number of limited points at a time, depending on your field of view, right? Depending on your field of view and your location, the points location, you can only see a certain number of points at a time. You want to find the maximum number of points you can see at a certain time. And what is it dependent on? It's dependent on the points location, it's dependent on your location, and it's dependent on the angle you are given, right? These are the dependencies we have for this question. This question becomes very simple once you make uh, one uh, really big observation. Once you realize what kind of problem it is that you're looking for, after that it becomes very simple. That's that. Before we get into that, there's also some math involved. Uh, I'm not going to really explain the math solution. Just uh, I can't. You could just review Sokotoa and how angles work. And I don't know. I didn't even review it. I just like, oh, okay, yeah. I remember I learned this a couple years ago. Some math stuff. Anyways, so how is this answer going to work? Number one, you're realizing that you have a certain field of view at, at every interval, right? It's dependent what on the points location, on your starting location, and the angle that you are given. You can keep rotating, right, to see more points, right? You can keep rotating to see more points, right? Different types of points. At a certain angle, at a certain rotation, you can only see a certain number of points at a time. Notice that. If my angle is like this, I have a 90 degree angle and I'm rotating it, right? I'm rotating it. Let's say I'm, I'm looking this way and I have a certain number of dots right over here. When I rotate this way, what did I lose and what did I gain? When I rotated like this much, this much, what did I lose? I lost all the points that were between right over here and I gained all the view of, um, view of all these points. Once again, I'm looking over here. As soon as I move this way, I lost view of all the points that were over here and I gain view of all the points that are right over here, but I still can see this small angle right over here, right? This small uh, angle right over here, okay? I see all this already. I'm gonna move this over here, go back to my 90 degrees. I see all these points now, and I lost view of all these points. Now look, you're seeing more points, and you're losing a view of some other points. What, what, what is that usually? That's usually a sliding window problem. That's what you need to know. It's, it's basically a sliding window problem. In a sliding window problem, you have uh, you have uh, your array, your, your starting array. Usually, there's like some kind of starting array, right? And you have a subarray, or your small little window. And you're either increasing your window from the right, or you're decreasing from the left. And you're kind of keeping the sliding window, and you're going through that entire array, viewing all the possible um, subarrays, or viewing all the possible windows that match. So that's how you want to think of this problem. Now, where is the math involved? The math is involved like this. It's gonna all come together in the end. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but it's gonna all come in the end. So we have these points, and we kind of need to convert these into some kind of sliding window approach. What we have are angle. What we have are points. We just have points. We need to convert each of these points to their angle. We need to convert each of these points to their angle, and that's where the math is involved. This is some equation using a tangent, inverse tangent, so Katoa, opposite of adjacent, blah blah blah. Don't worry about that too much. And I mean, worry about it, but I'm not going to explain it. And also in the question, uh, you can just create an, uh, like a, a real interview problem. You can just create a helper function called get angle and you can tell the interviewer, oh, I'm going to fill this up at the end. I don't want to worry about it and use that in your main part of the code. Now, 
We're going to take each of these points, we're going to convert them to an angle, and then we're going to sort them. How are we going to sort them? We're going to sort them in the relative order that we can view them. So for example, I'm facing east, I can first see this point, then I can see this point, then I can see this point. In this example over here, um, there's only two words, a bad example. But let's say uh, I have this field over here, and I have a bunch of points all across my plane. First I can see the points over here, then I can see these, 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 right? So I'm going this way, I'm going to counterclockwise. So these points will be sorted in order. How are they going to be sorted? By their angle. By their angle relative to the starting point, which is you're facing east, and relative to the location. Okay? So that's how this problem is going to work. So for example now, we're going to take all our points, which is like x, y, we have all these points, blah, blah, blah. We're going to take each of these points and convert them to their angles. So now we get all these angles. And I'm going to explain how you convert them to angles in the solution. So we have all these angles. We're going to convert them to angles. And then we're giving it a starting angle, meaning our, our field of view that we can see. And that will be, let's just say 40. Okay? Actually, let's say um, 30. 30 might be better. 30. Okay? Now, how many points can I see at one time? Well, over here, let's say I can see 20. That's my starting. I can see 20. Can I see 30? Yes, because 30 minus 20 is 10. It is still within my uh, angle, uh, my, my, my constraint, which is an angle of 30. So at 30 minus 20 is 10. So I can also see uh, that point. Can I see 40? Yes, I can see 40. Why can I see 40? Because 40 minus 20 is 20. 20 is still less than 30, so I can still see 40. I can see 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and I can also still see 50. Why can I still see 50? 50 minus 20 is what? 30. 50 minus 20 is what? 30. So I can see all these points within a 30 degree angle. My starting point will be over here, probably at this point. The end of that will be at 50, and that is my little angle. Then I'm gonna keep sliding. I'm gonna try to add 70 into the equation, 70 into my subarray. But now I can no longer see all these points at one time. Why? Because my angle that I was given was just 30 degrees. And to see 70 and 20 at the same time now is impossible. Because the point at the 70 degree angle and the point 20 degree angle have a 50 degree angle difference. They have what? A 50 degree angle difference. So I can't see both of them at the same time. Either I have to remove this one or, or this one. Well, remember we're having a sliding window approach, so we already calculated this and we kept track of the max. We can keep track of the maximum. So I see 70 now, so it's too much. It's above 30, so I'll drop my first and I'll get 30. So 70 minus 30 is 40. That is still too big, so I'll drop the 30 again. I'll get 70, and now again, once I have a, a possible window, in which I can see all these points. So you're gonna keep working through it like that. You're gonna add 70, you're gonna add 80. 80 minus 40 is 40, that's too much. I'm gonna drop this. Minus 45 is still too much. I'm gonna have to drop all of these. Actually, no. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drop all these points. I'm gonna keep dropping 45 and 46 and 7. Uh, and 80 minus 450 is 30. I'm gonna keep going like that, okay? I'm gonna go all the way around. So I'll show you the answer in one second. Actually, I won't even cut the video. I'll just go to this guy. He had a really nice solution. We'll just walk through that. Fang 2018, thank you for your solution. Is the Java sliding window problem? Yes. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create this array list of angles. Our count is zero, okay? And then we're going to go through um, all the points. We're gonna get the difference in x, we're gonna get the difference in y. If, there, if the x is if the difference of x is zero and the difference of y is zero, meaning it's the same exact point, we'll just increment the count, meaning we can always see this point at every time and then we just continue to go to the next one. But if they're not, which is usually the case, we'll add to our angles. And this is the equation to get the angle, okay? Okay? The inverse tan, do you, I don't think this is, this will give you theta, whatever. But this is the, basically the equation. You can Google this, figure this out. I don't wanna explain this right now. And I, uh, honestly, I don't even think I remember this fully myself. But anyways, this is the equation to get the angle. In the in the um, coding interview, if you don't remember this, it's fine. Just do angles.add, get angle helper function, and just put in your uh, equations. You should know what it's dependent on and it's always going to be dependent on the difference between y and x or is it dependent on the, your location and the uh, the point, the location of the point, right? Dependent on the point's location, these p and p, and dependent on your location, location, location. So basically this for loop will get you all the angles and then you need to sort the angles, right? As we mentioned, you need to sort the angles in the view that you're going to see them. And then this is basically just a regular old sliding window problem. Google sliding window, watch some videos on that if you don't understand them fully. Highly recommend that. Anyways, we're this temporary array. We're converting all these angles into over here. 
and we go through each of the angles and we're going to add D plus 360. Why are we going to do this? Well, sometimes we may have an edge case where we have the full angle is 360 or maybe 300, right? Let's say the angle is 300. Eventually you're gonna come, you're gonna go around, you're gonna go around, you're gonna go around and your, your angle is gonna go all the way around and it's going to need to shift back up to the uh, beginning again. Okay, so we're gonna have to calculate and add 360 to each of those points and add them to the end. Then we have the, and I don't think the angle is ever going to be larger than 360, so you don't need to worry about that because that would be whatever, a different problem altogether. Response is going to initially be set to count. Why is it initially going to be set to count? Well, because the count is what? The count is the number of points we see at our location. And if the point is at our current location, well then, well then we can always see it. So we'll start with count, okay? And then we'll go through the um, array, all the angles, and this is basically the shifting uh, sliding window approach. We're gonna go through all the points, and while, right, while, remember the, the what I explained, while the rightmost angle, or the, the angle at this, over here, at this point, minus the angle at this point, right, is less than the angle, the field of view that we're given. You can think of angle as the field of view we're given, right, while it's great or while it's too much, we're gonna keep bringing this back. So we're gonna slide this upwards. When it gets too much greater than our field of view, we're gonna slide this back. So we're gonna keep going like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, okay? Once again, bring this up. And once we go over our field of view, I'll bring this back, shifting. Over, bring back, over, bring over, over, like that, okay? That's what this is doing, okay? While this point minus this point is greater than the field of view we're given, we're gonna keep, J plus plus will shift this over. We're gonna keep shifting this over, okay? And then we'll end up with a response, right? Count plus I minus J plus one. I minus J is the number of points in, in there. Count plus I minus J plus one will give you the final number of points. And we'll, we'll, keep, keep, we'll, we'll continuously keep track of the maximum number of points we can see at this interval. And uh, at the end of that, we'll return it. That is the solution. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment improvements, suggestions on how I can improve these videos. Comment any questions and leave a like if you enjoyed. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next one.